I will go ahead and do so. I will go ahead and start with Commissioner Lee. Present. Okay. I will next go to Commissioner O'Reilly. Present. And Commissioner Buckholtz. Present. And Vice Chair Cohen. Present. Okay, so we do have a quorum of four commissioners. Thank you. Let's go to the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay. Next. And just give us a moment to bring up the flag. And then I will go ahead and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag. To the flag. Of the United, the United States, States of America, America and to the Republic, the Republic for which it which stands, stands one, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice, justice for all. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, the first order of the first, the public comment is going to come after the reorg, correct? Okay, that is correct. Thank you. Okay, the first item on the agenda is senior commissioner commission reorganization. Yep. So this one is um, essentially we are going to reorganize to select a chair and vice chair to serve over the next one year term. And I did include um, a small cheat sheet of what is expected for the chair and vice chair role. Essentially the chair's um, job is to lead the meeting and to make sure, sure, um, to make sure that um, all individual commissioners and public have an opportunity to um, share, sure that it is done in a slight fashion. The chair is the one that will lead the commission um, in the absence of the chair, the vice chair can fill in that role. And then in the absence, hi, Chris, um, in the absence of um, the chair and vice chair, a, another commissioner can be chosen for that specific meeting as, a, as a basically pro tem to fill in for that particular meeting. So again, this would be over the next year and they will take over um, starting this meeting and then we'll go for a full year going into April, 2023. So we will take each position um, individually and we will go ahead and start with the chair position. Um, and so we can open it up for nominations. Commissioner Buckholz. I nominate the vice chair who has so ably done her job, Jane Cohn, to assume the role of chairman. Okay, so we do have a nomination for vice chair Cohen to fill the role of chair. Commissioner O'Reilly. Oh, you're on mute. Oh, Commissioner O'Reilly, did you have, or were you kind of seconding that nomination? Okay. Seconding, seconding yeah. Okay, uh, Commissioner Lee. I was gonna second as well. Okay, are there any, sounds like you have a lot of support, Vice Chair Cohen. Are there any additional nominations for the chair position? Okay, seeing or hearing none, I will go ahead and um, call roll um, to have the commissioners either say yay or nay to the nomination of Vice Chair Cohen to the chair position. I will start with um, Chair uh, Nagao. Oh, is that a thumbs up? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I will next go to Commissioner O'Reilly. Yes. Okay. Commissioner Lee. All right. And Commissioner Buckholz? Yes. Okay. And Vice Chair Cohen, who is at the precipice of becoming chair, would you like to accept and vote for yourself for the chair position? Okay. So it is unanimous that Vice Chair Cohen will be going into the chair position for the next year. 
we will now move on to the vice chair position. Do I, and I will go ahead and open up the floor for nominations. Commissioner O'Reilly. I uh, recommend uh, Commissioner Buchholz as the vice chair. So I slightly decline on the basis of my health, my mental health. Okay. Are there other nominations? Commissioner O'Reilly? Well, then I would, I would recommend me as the vice chair. And you cut out just a little bit. I take it you nominated Commissioner, Commissioner Lee? Commissioner Lee. Okay. All right. Are there other nominations? Oh, um, Commissioner Nagao, um, go ahead and um, take yourselves off mute and then you can um, share maybe your nomination or second. I'll give it just a second. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. Perfect. So is there anyone, uh, any other nominations? Then I'll second that nomination for Commissioner Lee. Okay. So hearing no other nominations um, and having the second, I will go ahead and go through roll um, to have the commissioners vote on whether to accept or not accept Commissioner Lee as the vice chair. I will go ahead and start with Commissioner Buchholz. I, I enthusiastically <laughs> welcome <laughs> me to this job. Okay. Um, I will go to Commissioner Nagao. Aye. Yes. And chair Cohen. Yes. And Commissioner O'Reilly. Aye. And Commissioner Lee, would you like to accept and vote yes? I'm going to vote nay on grounds of incompetence. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you're <out> of <laughs> <laughs> So we do have um, both the chair and vice chair role. Um, Commissioner, now Vice Chair Lee, it sounds like you have a lot of support from your fellow commissioners. Thank so, you. Um, it will now be Chair Cohen and Vice Chair Lee that will um, conduct the senior commission meetings through April of 2023. So now Chair Cohen, I will turn it back over to you um, to go through the remainder of the agenda. Thank you. The next thing is public comments. Do we have any public comments? On I, go ahead. On yep. Not on the agenda. I will give it just a moment. Now, we currently do not have any members of the public in attendance. So we'll, we'll give it just a second to see if there are going to be any hands raised by those currently in the meeting with us. And I do not currently see any hands raised. So no public comment at this time. Thank you. The next item are the minutes. Are there any comments about the minutes on March 7th? I have one clarification. Yes. Under informational items number two, and then it starts, Commissioner Buckholz commented. The next line down says Nancy provided comments. I don't know who Nancy is. So I suggest that we put last names or first initials and last names to always clarify that. Mm -hmm. So could that be corrected? And, then no, I and we, can, we can definitely make that adjustment going forward. Um, and fortunately the individual um, did not, um, that virtually we only had her first name, um, which is why it was indicated um, in that regard. And so going forward um, for future uh, public comments, we'll make sure to capture that information. But for this particular one, unfortunately, we only had her first name available. Okay. And I move to approve. I'll second that motion. Okay, so it is motioned by Chair Cohen, seconded by Commissioner Nagao. We'll go ahead and go through the um, roll. Um, I'll go ahead and start with Vice Chair Lee. Aye. Commissioner O'Reilly. Aye. 
Commissioner Buckholtz. Aye. Commissioner Nagao. Yes. And Chair Cohen. Yes. Okay, that does pass unanimously. The next item is the work plan. Do people, are we gonna put, you're gonna put that up, Jamie? Yes, so we do have quite a few pieces associated with the work plan piece. And for this particular item, um, we are in preparation. So I did include last year's uh, work plan, which was 2021, 2022. In addition to a few other elements, one specifically um, outlined um, items for consideration for the commission as you work to discuss what should be on the work plan. In addition to goals and objectives that our department, Recreation and Community Services, has put together um, for consideration as you look for items to go on to the work plan. A few other reminders is that really this work plan should represent over the course of the next year, which essentially would be um, May to May, um, so 2022 um, to 2023, items that you can achieve within that next year. In addition, um, as we um, once we work to, to amend the work plan, you should also include in your discussion how the information will be presented to city council as you are scheduled to have your joint meeting with uh, the Los Altos City Council on Tuesday, May 3rd. Um, the exact schedule is currently being worked out, but generally speaking, each commission is allotted 20 to 30 minutes with city council to review both their accomplishments over this past year, in addition to what is planned for the next year. One other piece of information I would like to share is that the Park and Rec Commission um, recently went through this exercise at their March meeting. And part of their work plan is that they did want to collaborate with the senior commission because they are looking to do a variety of pop-up activities with a variety of different focuses and specifically, they wanted to potentially partner with the senior commission to maybe do something specific to the adult 50 plus demographic in the community. And so we got confirmation from our city attorney that in order to facilitate joint meetings and working on something jointly, that it would need to be a part or an element of the work plan. So I just threw quite a bit of information at you, um, but that is the um, information that was included in the packet in addition to elements that should be open for consideration. I will turn it back to you, uh, Chair Cohen, um, so that the commission may discuss what you would like to see on the work plan and then how that information should be presented to city council next month. Thank you, Jamie. You know, last year we had a subcommittee that worked on the work plan for you know, many meetings. So it seems um, a push for us to do all this today and then have it ready for city council for next month. So. I'm not sure um, it's, it's completely possible that we can do it, but let's give it a shot. Does everybody have that printed out for themselves, the work plan, or are you gonna put that up, Jamie? Yes, we can go ahead and put last year's work plan on um, the screen to share. And the one other comment I will make is that um, the work plan should um, it encompass things that the commission would like to focus on, but it is a document that can be adjusted if needed. I will use the pandemic as a perfect example. At the start, you had some specific items that you wanted to maybe focus on and work on, but the pandemic definitely presented a very different and real scenario that we had to work through, not only as a city, but as a commission. So we can definitely work to adjust and pivot depending on what is presented to us. 
So I will put that one caveat out there um, with the thought that let's um, have that discussion and see if we can have um, some items. Um, we could, whatever might be easier, maybe looking at what has been um, worked on or um, what you would like to see in the future. I will go ahead and stop there. Okay, Is, are you gonna put the work plan up now? Yes. Okay. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Hold on one moment. There we go. So this is the um, work plan from this past year, 2021 to 2022. And so the items that you have before you, um, specific goals, there were four, which was to increase participation by seniors, transportation needs for seniors, enhance health and wellness and participate in the age-friendly city initiative. So those were the four goals, obviously divided up into a couple of different projects, but maybe the commission can discuss if those goals still represent what the commission would like to focus on over this next year, or if there are elements that you would like to take off or add. And again, with the caveat that it should be obtainable over the next year. Yep, Vice Chair Lee. Oh, you're on mute. Thank you. Um, can we please mark age-friendly cities as in progress? And I believe we should continue that. And while I have the floor, could we please add the recreation coordination as a work item? Looks like you're getting a thumbs up and second by Commissioner Buckholz. It seems to me that some of these other activities would be folded into the age-friendly city. Um, Transportation certainly would be. Uh, health and fitness and well being would certainly be. So I don't know if those other activities should be subordinated to age friendly initiative or simply kept on the schedule of the work plan um, and basically share the success if any of the age-friendly city, that's a question. No, I think that's a good suggestion and you're absolutely right. Those are part of the domains of age-friendly. And so um, I might suggest that maybe the goal is the um, age-friendly initiative and then those um, subsets could be projects underneath um, age friendly as an overall goal. Um, and that would keep those elements um, related and together. I second the motion. <laughs> Jamie, I had, a, I had this idea about structuring our entire work plan um, about age friendly. In other words, it would start at the top, the structure would be age friendly cities and then underneath would be the eight domains and all of our work would be geared towards one of those domains. For example, in one or two of them, maybe three would be in coordination with the Parks and Rec Committee Commission. So I was just trying to figure out a, a, a structure for it that could make sense for us. And since we're gonna be looking at all these elements and domains, I just think that it would offer, but I was wondering if the city council had a structure that we had to follow for the work plan. Is that true? It is. So the template that you're looking at is the standard template for all of the commissions. And so I think, I think that's actually a really great suggestion, Chair Cohen, is that the ultimate goal, which is what the Age Friendly Initiative is about, is to really focus on all of those pieces. And then I think it makes sense to have that be the ultimate goal and then setting up 
those individual projects based upon those eight domains because absolutely as both you and Commissioner Buckholtz have um, highlighted and Commissioner Lee, there are all those elements like transportation and participation and health and wellness, those are all under those elements. Um, and then even collaborating with the Parks and Rec Commission on activities um, would be along the participation in health and wellness too. So I think that's a, a great suggestion and maybe we can set it up to where there is one goal and then those multiple projects that ultimately help you achieve the um, age-friendly initiative. That's what I'd like to recommend. That's what I envision. How do other people feel about that? You're getting a lot of enthusiastic thumbs up. <laughs> so what I'm looking at is that age-friendly city initiative, however we're gonna call it, would be moved up to goal one and it would really be our main focus goal. And then all the eight elements would be subsumed under that and all of our work would be designed to match one of the eight elements. Some would be in collaboration with Parks and Rec Commission, maybe other commissions, I'm not sure, but there's a lot of overlap with what we want to do with the elements. And, um, and anyway, I'm just trying to think of a good structure that we can focus on because we're just so committed to having Los Altos be an age-friendly city. And I did see um, Commissioner O'Reilly, I saw you had your, your hand up. Yes, am I, am I on? Yes. You are. Yes, well, I was, you know, when I was looking at that, um, it seemed to me that uh, I, clearly I agree that everything we do is to create a, an age-friendly city, uh, but that that particular goal was introduced to go through the process of uh, rendering ourselves or qualifying as an age-friendly city. And there's a big prize, as, as, uh, book, uh, Commissioner Buchholz and others would tell you that uh, it's a very involved process uh, so the concept, it seemed to me, the concept of an age-friendly city is the over, overarching goal for, for our existence. Uh, but the process of uh, participating or the process of making ourselves eligible for that was a subset goal. So I, when you start looking at work plans and all of this and where to put the categories, um, it, it gets a little confusing because we'd still have to have the process of participating, uh, meeting the benchmarks and all of that um, as a separate goal under the overarching uh, age-friendly city uh, um, ages. Well, that actually, that actually makes a lot of sense, um, Kevin, that um, there are some of the things that are existing that would not fall immediately into what our goal is, which is to complete the process of being certified. Now that is going to involve a very defined set of steps. And uh, Jamie, I just wonder, has there been any word from the uh, attorneys? There has been, and I'm working with Annabelle to complete the uh, the agreement process. So that was going to be part of my uh, my staff update, but we are in the works of completing that agreement piece. So if that is agreed and then presented to the uh, city council, then it was, it was clear the kinds of things that would uh, would happen would be the series of focus groups and then engaging with CAFE or funding it, and then engaging with um, CAFE to actually run that process with our assistance as senior commissioners in doing various duties in that. And those could certainly be defined in the assignments. So would there be a way to clarify, would there be a way under our main goal, which is to become an age-friendly city, next to the main goal would be to, uh, to um, present the, just a small summary of what the process is going to be for getting that established, con our consultant and what her process and the group's process is gonna be. 
And then still under that, the work plan, the actual things that we're gonna do would be still under with the eight elements in mind. Would that work? It breaks it into um, chunks that are achievable, that are, that are rationally um, seen as a sequence. That's, that sounds good to me. What do you think, Jamie? Is that doable for us? I think so. And I think that makes the most sense because that first part is getting the logistics pieces going. And then I think ultimately, as you're highlighting, Chair Cohen, um, the, the work and maybe that information that comes out of the action plan will help to, um, to inform um, the work that will need to be done under that second goal, which is to, um, to be an age-friendly city. So I think it does make sense to separate those two. Um, Chairman Lee, um, since you and I are kind of in that subcommittee, <coughs> uh, does that make sense to you on how to do it? Um, Vice Chairman, please, I don't want a promotion. God's sake. Excuse me, is that coming with a new uh, <laughs> But yes, so the door. <laughs> that certainly makes sense. Thank you, Bill. We could trade, Tony. <laughs> I have a question. Um, perhaps the, the, the process of, of, of completing that uh, the paperwork and a, and a survey and requires some funding becomes a project, becomes a project underneath everything else and we change the wording of it. So completing yeah. the process of applying for and all that that requires would be a project underneath the override over a arching goal and we reword it to make it a, pr a project because certainly it's going to continue. I think that's really um, important what you uh, mentioned Kevin is because it may not be funded by the city and we may have to go to the foundation or any other source of funding. Mm -hmm. So that, that is a, a separate, separatable and identifiable task. I love all of the uh, conversation and discussion. And one other thing which I think might allay some of the fears as well too, is that we will have our senior commission meeting the day before you present to city council on May 3rd. Our May senior commission meeting will fall on May 2nd. So what, um, what um, Candace and I can do is put this together in a draft form. And um, if there are ideas and at least um, share um, the draft of what this new formatted work plan will look like. And then the commission will have an opportunity to fine tune anything that needs to be adjusted just before the presentation on May 3rd. That sounds excellent. Really appreciate your effort on that. Yeah, so that's oh, quite a bit of work. So at this point, we're, we, we're not gonna appoint a subcommittee to work on, on it, we're just gonna follow your, watch your, see your draft. And when you send the packet next time, well, you know, we, we get the packet just really two business days before the meeting. So um, we, we need a little bit of thinking time to um, make comments and understand it. But sure. you, you understand the structure that we're presenting. So you're just gonna follow that. So Correct. And if the if the commission would like to appoint a, a subcommittee to finalize or work with staff on this, we absolutely could do that as well um, in preparation for our May 2nd meeting. Um, whatever um, the commission would think would be the most successful, um, we would definitely work to, to accomplish that. Under the leadership of our current vice chairman and um, his junior, uh, simple senior commissioner, we would be, I think, Tony, would we be willing to do this job? I would be happy to take this on. Thank you, sir. 
with you. <laughs> okay. And the other commissioners, um, are we good with um, Vice Chair Lee and Commissioner Buckholtz? Um, Candace and I can work together to at least do the, the shell with what has been discussed at the commission meeting today. And then we can get that over to Vice Chair Lee and Commissioner Buckholtz and they can add and adjust in preparation for our May 2nd meeting so that we can fine tune just before our presentation to city council. Excellent idea. I like it. Thank you. Um, I have another commitment to my family uh, for dinner six minutes ago, and I don't want my steaks to get cold. Right. <laughs> so I was, <laughs> I beg your forgiveness for signing off early. Thank you all very much. Enjoy dinner, Bill. Thank you, Commissioner Buckholz. All right. Um, one other piece um, for the conversation um, that we do have, um, and it can be a combination um, for the presentation to City Council, and maybe that can also be a part of the discussion May 2nd when we work to finalize the work plan. Um, it can be a combination. Um, the When I was liaison to the Library Commission, each of the commissioners took an opportunity to um, present um, a small pieces um, in, in regards to accomplishment or what they were looking to achieve over the next year. Um, in other past years, um, it was the chair and vice chair that um, shared that uh, those duties. Um, so whatever is the desire of the commission on how that information is presented, food for thought um, on maybe what would work best for the senior commission. Do you want us to decide today? It doesn't have to be today, just food for thought um, as we work on this process. Thank you. Let me get back to the agenda. One second. No problem. Papers door over here. Dogs barking. <laughs> <laughs> Company coming in. <laughs> so are we, we're good with the work plan? It's time to move on, Jamie? Okay. Do I call for any public comment at this point? Yes, you can. Okay. Can you check to see if we have any public comment, please? Sure. I will give it just one moment to see if we have any hands raised and we do not have any hands raised at this time. Thank you very much. So the next item is a commissioner subcommittee oral reports. Would anybody like to give an oral report? Tony, is there anything new on the age friendly that you can report on? Uh, we have no progress, but I'm hoping Jamie will have some updates for us. Okay, I think that's what's going to happen. Yeah, good. Thank you. Any other commissioners have a report? Okay, thank you. The next are the staff oral reports. Okay. So Jamie? Yep, I will go ahead and kick us off. So the first one, and I will do age-friendly first. So as I mentioned um, in uh, the work plan and a little bit earlier, we have received feedback from our city attorney. So working directly with Annabelle to work through the agreement process. And we actually have um, put all of that together The because um, we had the scope of work and anticipated budget. So that has been put in as a budget request to go into the next fiscal year. So both of those pieces are in motion. The other piece that I wanted to share is um, at the re recommendation um, from Commissioner Bullcoltz and Commissioner Lee. Um, we have the senior commission and um, the discussions with Dr. Pelham 
um, basically looked at utilizing the com senior commission to assist with some of the focus groups and some of the elements once we get that process going. But um, the, um, our, my conversation with Commissioner Buckholtz was that there may be other community members that have um, expertise that they may want to assist in the process. So I have um, initiated a conversation with our city clerk to find out how we could expand that subcommittee to include other com um, community members that may have a subset of skills that would be helpful in that process. So she is working on and looking at how we can make that happen so that it is a collaboration, not only by the senior commission, but other um, interested um, and um, helpful community members as well too. So I'm hoping to have more um, concrete details um, for the May meeting, but that conversation is uh, starting and I'm hoping to have information soon. Um, I'll pause there just for a second to see if there are any additional questions on the age-friendly section. Fantastic. Um, I will go ahead and keep going. Um, the next one is just a basic update on pickleball. So I am actually happy to report that we are working to finalize um, all of the rules and regulations and at the, um, the suggestion of the senior commission, we are um, actually offering um, opportunities at all the sites. If you recall, we weren't planning to do Montclair, but we are planning to incorporate that. So, um, and at the moment, we are looking that it is going to happen late May, early June. Um, so that is going to be coming relatively soon. And we are working very closely with the community group that came to speak, not only at the Senior Commission, but at the Parks and Rec Commission as well too. So we've been working very closely with that group as well too. So we're very excited that it is continuing. And I don't wanna steal Cherry's thunder, but we have also, um, I'll let her talk a little bit more about it, but we've also reestablished our indoor program as well. So I'll just dangle that little piece out there for